and the outspoken imam would soon find himself under fire. Media stories circulated about the radicalization of Muslim inmates by the chaplains, many of whom were immigrants. One article that got national exposure was an op-ed piece that appeared in the Wall Street Journal in June 2002. Charles Colson, who runs Prison Fellowship, wrote about the Islamic threat uh, to uh, American society emerging from a sort of radical Islam inside the prison system. Chuck Colson is a radical Christian who went to prison for being a criminal during the time of, of Nixon, and he was more afraid of Islam growing in the prisons because when he went to black men in prison especially, they didn't want the Bible. They wanted the Quran. Americans need to be very circumspect about messages they're getting from so-called experts who are experts purely by their ability to monopolize a handful of media outlets. And there's racism implied when many of these charges are saying that African-American Muslims in the prison are somehow under the control They've been brainwashed by a sort of central agency that's somewhere in the Middle East, probably in Saudi Arabia, and they're telling these guys what to say and how to control people who are incarcerated. But Muslim or non-Muslim, exercise justice even with those that we don't like. Or we when prisoners are exposed to a mainstream interpretation of Islam, it can counteract versions of the Quran that could justify violence. Almighty Allah commands you to exercise excellence, ahsan. But the content of services can vary widely. These are the commandments. What we need is a curriculum that is approved by the scholars of Islam in America that teaches these people going into the prisons how to teach the Quran for the social responsibility purposes that Islam is all about. This is one of the characteristics of our religion, to be balanced. For a lot of these guys who come out of difficult housing situations, they learn what a man should be, what the marriage situation should mean, how to become a parent, how to speak in ways that are intelligible and are uh, appropriate and acceptable regardless of the social setting in which they find themselves. Show them kindness, compassion. It wells up in them a sense of humanness that says, I can do different things. I don't have to be what I was. And that's what we have seen with many, not all, but many of the people who come out of the prison system. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that don't allow the hatred of any group of people to swerve you. Prisons have to become, once again, committed to rehabilitation. They have to be there for the purpose of being given an opportunity to come out in better shape than they went in. 60% come back to prison within the first two years of their release. The real question is how many continue to practice their faith on the outside? And that, I fear, is not a very high percentage because we need to do a lot of work on this, this bridging. Getting people in a, a stable environment is crucial, and religious communities help provide that, that stability, that foundation. With more than 600,000 prisoners released each year, reentry programs can help ex-offenders stay away from gangs and old lifestyles and transition back into their communities. In New York's Harlem neighborhood, a re-entry program associated with the Mosque of Islamic Brotherhood helps recently released inmates with substance abuse, housing, education, and job programs. Uh, one year after becoming Muslim, I went to prison, convicted of the crime of uh, murder in the second degree. I spent 25 years in prison, was recently released in 2003. Michael DeVoe is heading a new re-entry program with a Soros Fellowship grant. 
The whole notion of a Muslim reentry program provides connections, introductions, referrals, programs with, uh, with your own. And Muslims are going to come out with the same basic needs that anybody else comes out with. Identification. I need to get some identification. I need to find a place to stay. I need something to eat. But in addition, then, I need a place to worship. The mortal being. Most Muslim inmates who are released had converted in prison. So this is the first time they experience Islam on the outside. The idea is not to have someone take care of you. It's to help restore you so you can take care of yourself. What the mosque provides is uh, just the whole atmosphere is hopeful. We must strive to be of those who are just. People need to have that feeling that I'm going to get over this or get beyond this and that this situation that I've been in does not define me. This is something that took place. I acknowledge it. Um, I've gotten out. Let's move on. When you look at American society and you see that African Americans are 12 percent of the population, but f almost 50 percent of the national prison population, there's something wrong. That's an injustice. U.S. officials say there is the potential that prisons could foster homegrown terrorists. Many in the black Muslim community disagree. If you look at the history of African people, history of African Americans, the problem of domestic terrorism is, is not one that we are in any way, shape, or form guilty of or inclined towards. We're not the ones who bomb churches. We're not the ones that assassinate doctors and abortion clinics and that sort of thing. That's not our history. This catchphrase, radical Islam, suggests that there's some effort to train people to come out and engage in anti-American acts. No, I don't, there was, there's none of that. Muslims that are incarcerated would have no reason to even involve themselves in that kind of situation. When I came out of prison, I'm concerned about work. I'm not concerned about uh, uh, putting a bomb on my back and blowing up the community where my mother lives, where my sister lives, where my brother lives, if this is what I'm understanding, you know. No, no one has that concern. No one that I've encountered in my 25 years in prison has ever had that concern. Allahu Akbar. I'm proud of the legacy of the African American in prison. I'm sorry that they're there, but their legacy has been great. They have that legacy of a rational, faith-based existence, faith-based action. I'm proud to say that that's homegrown Islam in the American context. And in that sense, I'm very happy to say I am a homegrown Muslim. Not radical. Thinking, trying to be responsible, trying to avoid pitfalls of this society, and there's so many. That's how I'd like to see the word homegrown used.